This is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this scale and shell bag. And what you're going to need for this tutorial is two different colors. You're going to need worst weight yarn, four ply for the US, ten ply for Australia. Get two skeins of the color you plan on using for the crocodile scale because it takes a lot of yarn to do that. And you only need one color, I mean one skein of this color. So two for the crocodile stitch, one for the shells. You're also going to need a tapestry needle because you're going to need it to sew on the button. And of course you're going to also need a button. And you're going to need four stitch markers. I'm just going to use four pieces of string uh, for my markers this time. And you're also going to need a five millimeter hook or a size H hook. And that's it. So grab those things and we'll get started. Also the bottom of this bag measures 33 centimeters or 13 inches wide but it does narrow as it goes up. Okay to begin you want to chain 43. I'm going to do a lot less because I'm not making a whole bag on camera. So what you want to do is go ahead and chain 43 and when you get done with your chain make sure that it's not too loose or too tight and when you get done with that I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, once you have your chain of 43 for round one, you want to skip the first chain and then the second chain you want to put a single crochet. And out of the three little sections that you have in the in a chain, so you have a top, a bottom, and a middle. Oh, I don't know if you can see it on my screen, but you can definitely see it on your own project. Top and a bottom and a middle. I'm only going to be going through this top loop because we're going to be using the other two in a moment. So it's important just to go through that top loop only and do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook and you're going to continue to work one single crochet Ugh, not holding my yarn right I don't think one single crochet down your chain And when you get to the end of your row, make sure that you count and that you should have 42 stitches. Okay, now you have a single crochet row of 42. Now you want to turn your work, because we're going to be working on the bottom stitches of the single crochets. Move this tail out of my way here. And now you're going to put in the same last stitch here, you're going to be putting another single crochet. And then you're going to work going under both loops to do another single crochet. Let me get a little closer in case you can't see. See now you have the other two, one, two, going to be going under both of those, pulling up a loop and then doing your single crochet. Whoops, my loop here on my hook is a little small, I mean big. Then go on our ne next two. If you can find your single crochet here, you can just go into the hole right underneath it and do a single crochet. But you had 42 stitches here and on this side you should also have 42 stitches. So all the way around a total of stitches you should have is 84. Okay, when you get to the last stitch of your round, you should notice that this side is already starting to curl up because that's the idea, we, that is uh, what you want. On this side, we went into our last stitch and we're about to start, uh, we went into our last stitch here and we're about to start in our very first one again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my first stitch, then I'm gonna mark it so that I know that it'll be my first stitch of the row. We're gonna be doing single crochets all the way around again. So go into this very first stitch, do a single crochet, and then I'm going to place a marker here. I'm going to grab the loops of the stitch here. Just so I know this is my first stitch. 
Now we're starting our round two of single crochets and we're going to be doing uh, rounds two, three, four, and five. So four, four more rows of just single crochet all the way around for a total of five rows. Now you just single crocheted in this stitch. Make sure that you pay attention where you just single crocheted and then go to the next stitch. Put your next one and then continue around for four more rows of just doing one single crochet each stitch all the way around. Always make sure that you count your stitches and uh, that you continue to have 84 stitches all the way around. So as you can see here, after five rounds, you can really notice that the bottom of the bag is forming. Now at the end of round five, you want to slip stitch in the beginning stitch to end your round. Let me back up just a little. Okay. I want to make sure I stay in screen. Okay, so for round six, I have a round, I only did four rounds by the way. Yours will be just a little bit bigger. So for round six, you want to do a chain of three. Then you're going to skip one stitch. And then in the next stitch, you want to work two double crochets within the same stitch. So I'm going to skip this stitch and in this stitch I'm going to work two double crochets. Then you'll want to chain one. This chain three, by the way, counts as your first double crochet in your first chain one. So you do two double crochets, chain one, and then again you're going to skip a stitch. You're always going to be skipping one stitch. And then in your next stitch you're going to be putting one double crochet and then chain one. Skip a stitch and then the next you're going to put two double crochets and chain one. You're going to alter this pattern over and over again. So we just did two double crochets so we'll need to skip one and then the next we'll put one double crochet and chain one. Skip a stitch and in the next stitch we'll put two double crochets and chain one and you'll continue this all the way around doing two double crochets chain one skip a stitch one double crochet chain one skip a stitch continue this all the way around until you get back up to your beginning stitch okay then we're ready to start working our crocodile stitches we want to go right into using these two double crochets right here we're going to be working five double crochets on this post which will take us down and then we're going to work five double crochets up this post. So just go ahead and grab up that first post and you're going to be working a double crochet so you want to yarn over first. Then go through that first post, grab it up, then turn your work because it's so much easier to work your double crochets down this post if it's like going the way you crochet anyway. I'm going to work five double crochets on the post. Whoops. Be careful not to get that other double crochet because you only want to work on one. And count how many you got here. One, two, three, four, five, right? I got my five. Yes, five. Okay. So now this is the other out of the two double crochets worked in the same stitch. This is the other one right here. So, like I said, we worked down. Now we want to work back up here. So, when we were doing the five double crochets, we were holding it like this. Now it's best just to flip it over. Find that post like this. And then now yarn over and start working on that post going this way. One, two, three, four, and five. Now you've got five worked on each of those posts and now we've come to our single post here and all you want to do is go in through the this top stitch, just go in through the stitches normal and do a slip stitch. That kind of, that will anchor down the crocodile stitch. And you can see here, those are our two double crochets five double crochets work down and then we just turned it five double crochets work this way it's like the bottom of the bag how you worked all your stitches here and then you just flipped it over and then worked on the other side of the stitches that's exactly what you do with the crocodile stitch you work this way 
then you just turn and work this way. But you're going to be working on two different double crochets. So there you go again. You have two here. So you're going to start your double crochets on the very first one. So you'll yarn over and you'll start working. I work my very first double crochet onto it just like I'm doing a front post double crochet and then I'll just turn it and then it's just easier to work my other four double crochets onto it. It's three, four, and five. And then again, flip it over and you can see this is where you worked your five double crochets. The other double crochet is like right beside it. It's within the same stitch, so it's hard to lose. If you just follow into the same stitch, then grab a hold of it, start working your double crochets back up. Two, three, four, and five. And again, slip stitch in your double crochet to anchor that crocodile stitch. And then again, you'll continue that all the way around, working your crocodile stitch and then anchoring it on your single one. So continue that all the way around and I'll see you when you get done with the end of the row. Okay, when you get to the end of your round, you want to go ahead and slip stitch in this beginning chain three. Okay, for round seven, you want to chain two, which will count as a double crochet. Within that same stitch where you slip stitched into, which is the chain two from last round, you'll want to go into that same stitch and put a double crochet. Then chain one, and now working in this stitch in between your crocodile stitches, you want to put your double crochet chain one. And then again in the, you can open up these shells here, you can see your double crochet stitch here. You're going to want to work two double crochets into that double crochet. I know there's a slip stitch in there, but I'm working into the double crochet stitch itself, which is the same stitch you sing, uh, your slip stitch in last time. So you do your two double crochets and chain one, and then again, Work your one single double crochet and chain one in that stitch in between the crocodiles. Then you'll do it again in this double crochet. Work two double crochets and chain one. Then one double crochet, chain one. Then again, two double crochets and chain one. You're doing exactly what you did before. You're prepping your round basically because you're going to be working your crocodile stitches again on the double ones and then slip stitching into your singles but you want to offset your shells so that's why you're going to be doing the double ones here in the, in the single double crochet here and then you'll be working your one where the crocodile stitches are. That way they're offset. So again, continue to put two double crochets, chain one, worked in your double crochets, and then in the stitch in between the crocodile scales, you'll do a double crochet, chain one. So continue that all the way around, and I'll see you when you get done. Again, at the end of round seven, when you've come to your very last double crochet here, and then this is your, your double, so you have a single, double crochet and then you have two double crochets which is your chain two and your double crochet you worked in your very first stitch. Again after the very last sti stitch of your row after this double crochet you don't need to chain one because when you slip stitch in the top of this beginning chain two it will count as your chain one. Okay to begin round uh, eight, we'll chain one, and then we're going to again work our five double crochets on this chain two, on the post of the chain two. 
So we're going to grab that up, work our first double crochet on it just to make it easier to mark it. And then turn, grab up that chain, and then work your other four double crochets on the post of your chain two. So we got one, two, three, four, and five. And then again, just flip it over. And you can see this is your other, this is your first double crochet here. And this is where you want to grab up and work your five double crochets on that guy as well. Three, four, and five. And again, you're going to want to slip stitch in your single double crochets here. And then again you got your two double crochets here. Grab up that first post, work your double crochet on it, and then yarn over and start working your the rest of your five. Or I should say the rest of your four for a total of five. Two, three, whoa. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so turn it. Grab up this next post. I know it's difficult to do the crocodile stitch at first, but it only takes practice. Just practice, practice, practice. That's the only way you can get better at it. It's the only way you can get better at anything. Then slip stitch and that double crochet to anchor it and you can see they're kind of offset. You want to continue to do this all the way around. Okay, after you finish your last crocodile stitch and you anchor it in the last double crochet of the round, then that's just counted as the last stitch of the round. Now for rounds 10 through 15, which will give you four more rows of crocodile stitch scales, you want to repeat the last four rows six through nine. So like for instance this one, like you began your very first row here which was uh, round six, you'll want to do the same thing for round ten. You'll chain two to begin and then you'll go right back into that same stitch and do a double crochet. Because remember you want your two stitches to be in here because chain one by the way because then you'll put your single double crochet in between the scales. Then you'll chain one and now you'll have it offset again. The next one again where it has two double crochet, I mean one double crochet here, you'll put your two double crochets and chain one inside your double crochet. And then wherever you have your crocodile stitch shell, you'll put one double crochet and chain one. You'll continue that pattern all the way around and then the end of the round you'll slip stitch in the beginning chain two and then you'll only do chain three to start round 11 and then you'll continue again to repeat those two rows until you have a total of four rows of crocodile stitch scales. Now the total that I am going to do is six but in these last few you're going to have to kind of do a decrease. So go ahead and do your total of four rows and then I'll show you how I did these last two rows. Just wanted to remind you at the end of round 10 you want to slip stitch in the beginning of the chain two and then you'll chain one and then you'll start working your crocodile stitches up and then uh, down and then up again and then anchoring it here. Okay, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to pretend I did my total of four rows of crocodile stitches. And each crocodile stitch, remember, contains two rows, the primer row, and then of course the row where you do your, your stitches. So that's why I say repeat six, seven, eight, and nine. Because six, seven, eight, and nine are going to be two rows, basically. Two rows of crocodile stitches. So rows 10 through 15, should give you a total of four more rows, or I should say two more rows, total of four uh, scales. 
So for your next two rows of scales, so you'll have a total of six, for around 16, it's going to be done almost the same as before, except you won't be doing a chain in between on this primer row. So you'll want to do a chain two, and then you'll go in and do your double crochet as normal to begin this round, but you won't chain one in between. You'll go right into the next stitch and do your double crochet. And then don't chain one after that either. Then you'll go into your next double crochet and work your two double crochets. And don't chain one, just go right into your next. And then don't chain one. So you're just going to be doing exactly what you did before, only difference is you're not going to be chaining one in between. You're just going to go and do your two double crochets, then your one double crochet, and then your two double crochets. This is going to make it start to decrease a little bit and make it smaller. So you want to go ahead and do that for this row and work your next row, round 17, work your crocodile stitches as normal. And then you'll do the same thing before, I mean to the next row as well. But I'll see you uh, when you get back here to that row. Okay, I just got done with round 17. Now I just wanted to do a recap um, for those I might have lost before. So remember I showed you on camera how to do these two rows, which consist of two rows of each. So this is, this was six and seven, this first uh, crocodile stitch, because there's a primer row and then there's a crocodile stitch row. So this is basically six and seven, eight and nine. And I wanted you to repeat that again those, those four rows so that you'd have a total of four rows of crocodile stitch. And then for your fifth row of crocodile stitch, your primer row, I wanted you to do it, but instead of doing two double crochets, chain one, one double crochet, chain one, like you did for the last uh, six rows, or eight rows, two, four, six, eight, yeah, eight rows, um, don't, don't chain in between in the, on that primer row. <clears throat> So what you would do is just put your, your your crocodile stitches exactly like you like you did these other rows. There's no difference in those. And then again, um, you should now have five rows of crocodile stitches. Now we need to do one more row of crocodile stitches. So we're going to need to do two more rows: the primer row and then of course the crocodile stitch row. So, like we did to prime this one. We're going to be doing it again for round 18. So for round 18, you should have ended round 17 again on the very last double crochet of the round. Just makes it easier. Again, you'll want to chain two and double crochet right back into that same stitch. And then again, don't chain one. Just go right into the next crocodile stitch and do a double crochet and don't chain one. Then again, go back into the next double crochet, double crochet two, and don't chain one. And you're going to continue this all the way around. And again, this is going to cause it to get a little bit uh, smaller. It's going to, it's mainly for the rows of shells that we're going to be doing soon. Um, so anyway, you're going to continue to do this exactly like you did round 16 where the primer row, you won't put any chains in between. And then you're going to work round 19 as normal. Just put your crocodile, work your crocodile stitches and slip stitch in the double crochets just like you did before and that will be your total of six rows of crocodile stitches. Okay, so you finished round 19 and you should have six rows of crocodile stitch. So for round 20, you want to change colors I'm not going to change colors for the purposes of this tutorial, so you go ahead and change colors. And once you're ready, you want to chain one. And then you want to single crochet in the same stitch and put two single crochets in that same stitch. And then you want to put a single crochet here in the middle of the crocodile stitches. And then again in the double crochet 
you want to work two single crochets. And then again, one single crochet in between the crocodile stitches. And you want to repeat this until you have three crocodile stitches left at the end of your row. So continue until you've got three crocodile stitches left and I'll tell you what you need to do. Okay, I have three crocodile stitches left. I just did my double single crochets and the double crochet before the last three. Now for the last three, you just want to put one single crochet and then in the double crochet in between, put one, I'm saying double crochet, single crochet. Only put one single crochet, then put one single crochet in the next crocodile stitch and then a double crochet again, put one single crochet and then one single crochet in the last crocodile stitch. And that brings us back up to our double, two double single crochets. Now for round 20, I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch in this beginning single crochet. Okay, now for round 20, you'll want to chain one and single crochet in the same stitch. And you're going to put one single crochet in each stitch around. You should, at the end of this round, and already have 60 stitches. So continue to put one single crochet in each stitch around. Count your stitches, make sure you have 60, and I'll be right back. Okay, at the end of the round, you want to slip stitch in your beginning single crochet. Now for round 21, we're going to be getting our shell stitch now. You want to chain two, and in the same stitch, you want to work another, you want to work four double crochets. This chain two counts as one double crochet, so at the end, you'll have five total stitches. So you want to put four double crochets, so that's one, two, three, four, and five. Then you want to skip two stitches, one, two, and in this third, you want to put a single crochet. Then again, you want to skip two, one, two, and in this third, you'll want to work five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Then again, you'll skip two stitches, one, two, and in the third, you'll put a single crochet. Then you'll repeat this for the round. Skip two, and in the third, put five double crochets. Three, four, and five. And again, skip two, and in the third, put a single crochet. Skip two, and then put five double crochets. Continue this for the round. Okay, so I've come to the end of my row, and for some reason I have three here instead of my normal uh, two that I'm supposed to have. So for my very last stitch here, I'm going to skip two, then I'm going to go ahead and do a single crochet decrease. Oh, sorry, I had to sneeze there. Because you want to end with uh, skipping two and then slip stitching in the beginning chain two. I'm going to keep that pattern all the way around. So for round 22, you're going to chain one and you're going to find that middle single crochet, which is here. So you'll skip two, but in the very first one, it's actually a skip one. And you'll find that middle of the five single crochets, I mean a double crochets of your shell, and you'll put a single crochet in the top of it. And then in your single crochets here, you'll work five double crochets for your shell. Three, four, and five. And then again, find that center double crochet. You'll skip two, one, two, and then this third, which is the top center of the shell, you'll put your single crochet. And then in your single crochets, 
you'll work your shell of five double crochets. And then again, the center of the five double crochets here, you'll put a single crochet. And you'll continue this pattern for the entire round. And at the end of your row, you'll want to slip stitch in that beginning single crochet. Then you'll begin your shell again ch by chaining two and working four double crochets in that same stitch. There's three and four. And again, that beginning chain two counts as a stitch, so that's a total of five stitches. And then you'll find that center single crochet or just one, two, and then the third stitch, single crochet. And you'll want to continue this. This is round 23. So for the next five rounds, rounds 23 through 27, you want to repeat those last two rows, of uh, round 21 and round 22, these two rounds here. You repeat this for another five rounds. And when you get done, I'll see you back here for round 28. Now I wanted to show you real quick. See, this is the, the, row, the rows of shells. This is round 21, 22. Then you have 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. So you have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 rows of shells. Okay, when you get done with your 7 rounds of shells, for round 28, you want to chain 1, and then you want to single crochet in that same stitch. And then you'll single crochet in the next 4 stitches. For a total of 5 stitches, you want to single crochet over each of your double crochets that make up your shell, your five double crochets. Then when you get up to your single crochet, you want to work a half double crochet in your single crochets. And then again, you'll single crochet in the next five stitches over your shell. And then when you come up to your single crochet again, you'll do a half double crochet worked in your single crochets. And you repeat that for the round, you're trying to flatten out your row more. And when you get to the end of your round, you'll want to slip stitch in the top of the single crochet. Then you'll want to change colors, change to your color, the same color that you used for your shells here. Go ahead and attach that now to your, your bag. I just usually slip stitch it through the, the loop like I showed you before. So when you have that done, you'll want to chain one with your new color and single crochet in that same stitch. Then single crochet again in the next nine stitches. So counting the first one and your nine stitches, you'll have a total of 10 single crochets in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And once you have your 10 single crochets in a row, you'll want to do a single crochet decrease, which is just going in through the next stitch, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through all three loops. And you want to continue that pattern for the remainder of your round. Single crochet in the next 10 stitches, and then do another single crochet decrease. And at the end of this round, you should have 55 stitches. So slip stitch in your beginning single crochet chain one. Then for rounds 27 and 28, the next two rows, you just want to put one single crochet. I'm going to go right back into that stitch I just slip stitched into. Put my first single crochet. You want to put one single crochet in each stitch around for the next two rounds. So this one and the next one, 20, rounds 27 and 28, and you uh, should have, still have 55 stitches. Okay, once you've got rounds 27 and 28 done, for 29, you're going to chain one, single crochet in that same stitch, and you want to single crochet in the next 27 stitches. You should have tw you should have 55 stitches total, so single crochet in 27 should get you in about midpoint in the middle of your bag. So for me, I need to back up a little bit just to show you. Should bring you about like to here in your bag where you can start to make your your buttonhole. So single crochet, first 27 stitches, and then you want to chain three 
and then skip three, one, two, and three. And then the fourth stitch, do a single crochet. And then you want a single crochet in your remain, remaining 25 stitches. You just did one single crochet here, so you have 24 more stitches to end your round. So continue to single crochet all the way around, and I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, when you get to the end of the round, you want to slip stitch and you're beginning single crochet. And then now you want to change your color to your your next color, I mean your uh, original color, the same one that you used for your shell. You want to switch back to that color. And then you'll chain one, single crochet back into that same stitch. And you're going to do the same thing as you did last round. You're going to be single crocheting in the first 27 stitches until you reach your buttonhole again. And inside this buttonhole here, over this chain three, you'll want to do three single crochets worked into that space. And then again, you'll single crochet in your remaining 25 stitches. And then slip stitch and beginning single crochet. And then for round 31, the last round of your bag, you're just going to be putting one single crochet in each stitch around. So continue to do that and I'll show you how to make the handles of your bag. Okay, and when you get to the end of your round, you'll chain one and you'll cut your yarn. Cut it enough to where you can work it in with a tapestry needle. But since this is just a, a demo, I'm not going to cut my yarn. Okay, so this is where your four markers come in. What you want to do is you want to make sure that your button is as centered as you can. And you want to try to maneuver it, even if you have to maneuver it a little bit this way or this way. You want to try to, I mean, you want to have two stitches on the end here instead of just one stitch on the end like that you want to have two stitches on the end one and two because you want to try to keep this as symmetrical as you can and you want to mark out eight stitches total so you'll have one two these are two four six eight and you'll want to put your your hook here and then you can count one two three four five six seven eight you have eight total here stitches and you'll get your marker mark that very first stitch and then mark that second stitch and you'll do the same thing on the other side of course you won't have your your yarn still attached and you'll be able to see it. Again, maneuver it a little this way or that way, however you need to ensure that you have your two stitches on the end. One and two, and then you can count two, four, six, eight. Which well, is hard for me because this is two, four, six, eight. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say that's eight. So once you have your eight marked out on this side, Again, place your markers. Okay. So you have your eight stitches on each side marked out. Now once you do, and since I'm not uh, attaching, I mean, since I'm not cutting my yarn, I'm going to get my next color. And with my other bag here, I started with one color here. I started with my darker color, just because it was different from this one. And I did a total of 27 rows. I wanted to do a total of 55 rows on my strap, but that makes it kind of a handbag. It's not something you can put over your shoulder. If you're looking more for a shoulder bag, then you want to do a total of 70 stitches and you can just do 70 rows, I mean, 70 rows, and if you want to do it half, like I have here, half color, half color, then you'll want to stop after the 35th row and change colors. For me, I'm doing 55 rows, so I want to stop after the 27th row and then change my color and then finish until I get to the end here, and I'll stop short one row. I'll stop after my 24th row, and then I'll 
uh, I'll show you how to attach it on this side. But first, we, I got to show you how to begin it before I can show you how to end it. So anyway, get the color you want to use. Let me back up just a little bit. And then you have eight marked out on each side, so it doesn't really matter which way you start. You just need to know um, where to attach it on the other side. And we have it marked here, so we'll, we'll know. So you want to start by doing a single crochet attachment in the marked stitch. So you pull up a loop, but don't pull it through the loop on your, your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. That's your first single crochet. And then you'll want to work a single crochet over until you reach your eighth stitch where you have your marker here. So in this last stitch that's marked is your eighth stitch. And you'll put your last single crochet here. Now you have your eight stitches. So now for a row after row until your straps as long as you want it, you'll chain one and turn and then work your eight single crochets again on this side. And you'll keep doing that. You'll do your eight single crochets, chain one, and then turn and do eight single crochets. Now that you have it marked on this side though, you can go ahead and remove your markers on this side because they're probably just going to get in your way once you have it, uh, your eight stitches going on here. There. So you keep going row after row, eight single crochets, chain one, turn, eight single crochets, chain one, turn. Keep doing that until you reach your the length desired for your strap. And then I'll show you how to connect it. Okay, once you have your strap, your eight stitches here, crochet up all the way until you've got 55 rows. If you want to make it a longer strap where you can run your shoulder, then go 70 rows. And you want to end with your, your bag facing like this. And there's the inside of your bag, bag here. I'm not sure if it's the same with left-handed or not. It could be better for a left-hander to have it like this where the hole is facing you. But to attach it, you want to, you want to basically fold your strap so hard to do this with a shorter strap. And I'm going to put my bag like this. You want it to line up these, this row of eight with your, with your stitches that you marked on this side. And yours will be much, much longer. So you'll be able, you will be able to fold it right up to match. There's one marker to the next marker. There we go. So whenever you get done, it'll be sewn on this side and you'll have your strap here. So basically like I did, I just folded it up and over until I have it aligned this to this. One marker to the next marker. Where's my yarn here? I need to tighten up my loop. Where's my yarn? There we go. Have it fed through. That's what my problem was. Okay, so I'm gonna have to let it go, get it on this side. Okay, line it up with this marker to this marker. And then I'm gonna go through this stitch here that's marked on this side, go under both loops of that stitch, and then my very first stitch on my strap, and then single crochet. And you'll go through the stitch on the bag and then the stitch of your strap that you've already made. And you'll continue to do that with all eight stitches until you reach your marker. This is the tightest way to secure your strap to your bag. And when you get all eight stitches, you want to chain one, cut your yarn, and you'll be working that in with a tapestry needle. And when you get done, you'll have a clean sew on this side. And then, of course, you started your row on this side. So you'll have this nice strap for your bag.
And that is it. That is how you make the scale and shell bag. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please don't forget to click the like button and share this video. And if you're a first time watcher or haven't gotten around to subscribing yet, please take a moment and do that. As always, thank you guys so much for watching.